Hey guys, I'm Dr. Pyle Patel here, and this is Cody Plofker. Um, we're here today to talk to you guys a little bit about why stretching might not necessarily be the thing that you should jump to when you're looking to relieve your tightness. Um, a big thing that's kind of thrown out these days is, you know, I feel tight, what do I do? Okay, jump to stretching. And that's something that we feel very strongly shouldn't always be the answer. In fact, it very rarely should be the answer, and we want to explain today why we feel that way. Um, Best case scenario, so you start stretching some stuff out and you feel this immediate relief of whatever tightness that you've got going on. However, there's a reason for your tightness and there's a reason that that tightness sinks in. So what might happen is in the next hour or two, three hours or the next day, you find that that tightness comes right back and then you find yourself having to stretch again. So that temporary relief doesn't really take you very far. Um, Worst case scenario, you start stretching and you find that you're actually overstretching some things and things that you might not even be intending to stretch, such as the ligaments that hold up your joints together and the capsule itself that is like um, that creates organism that cre that creates or um, organization through your body. So when you start to actually stretch those things, those aren't very forgiving. They don't just come right back. You can actually overstretch some stuff and create long-lasting damage in your body. So there's a very good reason as to why stretching might not necessarily always be the answer that you need to look for when you're actually feeling tight. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about that. Today. So let's examine for a moment why muscles just get tight. Your muscles don't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to decide to get tight. Or I'm going to decide to kind of feel really tight and restrict range of motion, right? The body is just a lot more complex than that. I'm going to argue that most of your muscles are not actually truly short. They don't lose the length of their tissues, right? However, they just feel very tight because the brain is kind of holding on and putting the brakes on for lack of stability elsewhere. So the brain is always trying to keep your body safe and, and kind of keep you move, moving freely. However, if you have a lack of stability in one area, right, your brain is going to create what is called neurological tension or tone. It just means a lot of tension or tone in a muscle, right, to help kind of support your other joints and give you some stability. So some common examples here are the hamstrings. A lot of people feel like they have tight hamstrings, but I think most people actually have very long and weak hamstrings. However, because of a lack of stability around the, the pelvic girdle and the kind of core complex of the, you know, like all the way down from kind of rib cage to hips and pelvis, right, most people don't have a good stability mechanism there. So all the brain does is it actually just looks to hold on the one muscle that it can, the hamstrings, kind of to create some tension to keep things in place. So I'd argue that the hamstrings or the, the tension in the hamstrings is actually the only thing that's, that's allowing people to kind of keep some stability and not go into debilitating pain a lot of time. So stretching can actually make things worse because you're, you're over lengthening and, and kind of weakening the muscle that's just helping keep you stable and keep you upright against gravity, right? So just stretching is kind of like a band-aid fix. You might feel better temporarily, but it's not actually dealing with the reason that, that you have this kind of tension or tone in the first place. Another really good example is the calves. A lot of people feel like their calves are really tight, but they stretch and stretch and stretch, and yet it might feel good temporarily when they're getting a stretch, but every day they just have to do it and do it, and they're like, oh, I just know I need to stretch more. I just know I need to stretch more. And and it's, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So we just got to kind of take a little bit more nuanced approach to the topic. Most people, they carry their center of gravity forward. They feel like they're falling over and the calves are actually the only thing that's holding them up. So if they just stretch and stretch, it's not actually dealing with the reason why, right, their calves might be tight in the first place. So what we're going to do in our assessments is we're going to look at so many specific issues and limitations and the positions that, that their bones and stuff are in and find the reasons why they're tight. And, and doing that, we find so much more success than just going and blindly stretching the, the tissue that feels tight. Okay, so the second thing I want to talk to you guys about is actually position of your bones. Um, what's going to happen is if your bones themselves are in a poor position, let's say they're too far facing one way or the other way, what will happen is it's actually going to close down the range, the range of motion that you actually have within that joint. So if we take our hips, for example, if I'm sitting here, these, this is my hips, if I'm tilted too far forward, so if you see my hips here, if I come in the door and I'm shifted forward like this, which we see quite a bit, what's going to happen is this hip socket right here, right over here, it's actually going to start to face forward. That's going to actually close down a lot of range. And what's going to happen is all the muscles that sit off of it, including your hamstrings, which are chronically tight on a lot of people, same thing with the quads, it's all, it's all going to come off with that feeling of being tight because your joint itself is facing a non-optimal position. It's no longer in a neutral position. 
So what happens is the second we start to influence where those bones are sitting, you can actually open up the joint, put it into a more neutral position, and all that muscle tension surrounding the joint will tend to settle down. So you might not even have to worry about stretching at all at that point. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how position can influence somebody's hip and cause a bunch of hamstring tightness. And the second we change that position, it might just completely relieve itself. So Cody's going to come down on the ground. Cody, what I want you to do is you're going to let your hips roll forward. You're going to let your back arch completely. Same position I was talking about earlier. He's going to take a deep breath in. Get really inflated through his um, ribs right there. And we're going to take his leg and we're going to lift it up straight here. Just take a look at how much hamstring length he has right here. So you can see it's getting pretty tight right here. I don't think I can go any further than this. We're going to bring it on down. Now what I'm going to have him do is he's going to take a deep breath in and exhale. Let all that air out of you. Let it all out. We're going to roll these hips up. We're going to change the orientation of that socket and we're going to go again. This time I'm going to raise it up. You can see how all of a sudden his hip socket is facing a different way and he's got all this range. We'll probably go further, but it's going to get uncomfortable any further from there. So, you can see how if the joint is positioned in a certain way, if it's too far forward, all those muscles around the end, here go ahead and stand up, all the muscles around that actual joint, they're going to start to feel unevenly tight and unevenly restricted. Here's another way of looking at it. Go ahead and face that way for me. We're going to roll these hips forward. You can see his hamstrings are back here, okay? As he's tucked forward, he's actually pulling up on those hamstrings. So they're really tight right now. It's coming off as that feeling of being tight. If he changes the way his hips are sitting, go ahead and pull on back again. If we can pull down and strengthen these hamstrings, what will happen is as he pulls down and strengthens them, it's actually going to relieve itself. So it's no longer, he doesn't have that same tension that he had before. So what instead we're going to try and do here is work on strengthening those muscles that feel like they're really tight. That'll actually pull you into a better position. It'll pull those bones into a better position. So that way you get that more lasting relief. Those muscles should start to actually feel like they're staying um, released and relaxed and no longer tight for the long haul. Alright, so now you guys should have a really good understanding of why stretching is not all the, always the answer to help improve your tightness or, or restrictions. And I kind of wanted to show you what to do instead. So remember, don't always just go to stretching a tight muscle. Think about improving stability and position of the, the bones surrounding those muscles to help improve that range of motion. Um, if you guys want some kind of more specific examples of things that you can do to help relieve tension in, in any muscles, please just kind of give us a comment. Um, Drop us a line, send us an email, just let us know kind of what you have that's feeling tight. We'll, we'll show you some stuff that can help. And if you live locally, you can come in for a free consultation with uh, Dr. Pyle. She can kind of take a look at how all of your bones and joints are sitting, kind of give you a recommendation of exactly what you can do to give you a little bit more stability, improve your position, so that all of those tight muscles can kind of go away and feel like they're a lot uh, less restricted. So just want to say thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.